How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you. Indeed, I am blessed once again to have you joining us here in this virtual space for worship at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take a moment before I engage uh, with what the sermon topic and the subject matter will be this morning. I want to take a moment and thank our music ministry, our director of music, Brother Smith, and all of those who participated in making our concert a success. We thank God for how God moved and how everyone gave of themselves to be a blessing to the Lord and to our church and community. Also, thanks to all of our partners, all of the sponsors, everyone who made the toy drive what it was. We thank God for the work that was done by each person, volunteers and everyone to make that moment what it was. We appreciate you. We pray that our community was blessed by your generosity and your gifts to make our toy drive a phenomenal success. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to get ready and turn with me to Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12 is where we will be looking this morning for the word of God. As we've been talking about this Advent season, Pastor Kennedy and I, we've been preaching and teaching about Advent, various lessons of Advent, the time of Advent, and we've talked about time of waiting, a time of witness. But now I want to talk about this Sunday, this service, this morning, a time of worship. Advent, a time of worship. It is in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, where we have the story of the Magi who make their way to worship Jesus. They go through much to get to Jesus, having to deal with Herod and others trying to distract and detour them from worship. Nonetheless, they were so determined to worship God that nothing stopped them. So in essence, they teach us a lesson on our response to Jesus in the sense of how do we respond to him in worship? We respond to his person, we respond to his power, we respond to his presence, we respond to the prophecy about Jesus. This is what it means in this Advent season for us to think of Jesus beyond the gifts, beyond the trees, beyond Santa Claus. It is about worshiping our Savior. So get whatever notes you're going to need and pencils, pens, whatever you're going to have, your digital devices. I want you to follow along as we share the word of God this morning, Advent, a time of worship. Again, I am so blessed to have you with us. I appreciate you immensely for taking the time to log in, to click on and to worship with us. And I ask that you would share, like, comment, be a part of the worship experience and also make sure that you witness through this tool of sharing the gospel by sharing this video that others will be able to hear the word and be empowered by the word of God. If you would now join me as we go to God in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we stop now to say thank you. God, we thank you for another day. Thank you for the bounty of blessings that you so graciously given to us. We pray now, oh God, that you would forgive us of all of our sins and trespasses against you. Lord, I pray now that you would bless our time together in worship that we would experience you in a very fresh way. Lord, that our hearts would be turned more towards you than ever. It's in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. And every child of God said, Amen. Again, I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Now join us as our music ministry lead us further in this worship experience. God bless. Millions of words can't describe This feeling I have down inside It's so hard to contain it's Hard to contain it So I'll simply, so I'll simply say, say Jesus, Jesus. of Jesus Christ this is your chance to offer your worship to him 
Come on, let's sing it together. Millions of words. Millions of words can describe this feeling I have. This feeling I have down, down inside. inside. It's hard to contain. It's hard to contain. So I'll simply say. So I'll simply say.
He first love Little old me There is a name That I love to hear I love to sing It's worth It's sounds Like music in my sweetest name on earth oh if somebody helped me I think I could get through it how I love Jesus anybody else out there can you say oh how I love Jesus Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Numad Olive, and those of you who are viewing us virtually, what a delight, what a profound privilege it is to share with you in this virtual space. Indeed, we bless God for the seasoned, and of course, you've heard it said, but it is so true. We punctuate it even the more. Jesus is indeed the reason for the season. We celebrate his birth. And ultimately, we celebrate our salvation in his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his soon uh, return. Indeed, he's coming back again. We have so much to be thankful for. I pray in this season that you will be joyful and indeed embrace the glory of our faith in God. Hence that phenomenal wonder, God in Christ, the incarnation. Well, it is time for us to respond to God in a gracious way as we give to him that which belongs to him he shares it with us. We give him the tithe, the tenth, and proportionately we give out of our deposit according to the Lord's blessings, and we do it all cheerfully. Let's pray before we give together. Father, we thank you for the novelty and nobility of this morning. Indeed, we thank you for this moment. We praise you for the wonder of your person. Indeed, we praise you for our salvation that you, as we celebrate a Christmas, you would give yourself to human flesh so that you might die for our salvation. And indeed, we honor you. We give praying that you'll receive our gifts ultimately for your glory, existentially for the expansion of your kingdom here on planet Earth. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. We give because we love the Lord and because we believe in kingdom building. Amen. Well, bracket, brace yourself. The Lord has a prophetic word through our senior pastor. Listen, whatever you have to do, do it so that when the word comes forth, you will still indeed yourself in spirit to hear what God has to say. He has a word with you in mind. The peace of God be upon you. Indeed, I pray. How good the Lord is. Blessings to you. Thank God that you've joined us once again as we share the word of God. I would ask of you to turn with me to Matthew chapter number two. Matthew chapter two. And I want to commence the reading at verse number one. Matthew chapter two, commencing the reading at verse number one. Hear the word of God as it speaks to us. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. 
Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. I want to tag the sermonic presentation, Advent, a time of worship, Advent, a time of worship. As we engage the season of Advent, one cannot help but see that this is a time of worship. We've discussed this being a time of waiting, a time of witnessing. And this morning, I want us to focus in on the fact that it is the time of worship. We do not worship Santa, but we worship the Savior. We do not worship gifts, but we worship the gift who is Jesus, our Savior. In the text that we have read this morning, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, there are some valuable and insightful lessons as it relates to us worshiping our God. What we discover as we read in the beginning of this chapter, chapter 2, is that there are some characters that we are introduced to by the penmanship of Matthew. Matthew tells us about King Herod. He tells us about the chief priest and the teachers of the law. He also tells us about the Magi from the east. And what we discover is that there are different and varying responses to this child, this baby, Jesus. In fact, it is what we see in our culture today, varying responses to our Savior. So while we look from the perspective of Christian tradition at the Magi, they were considered to be kings, but a more precise description of the Magi would be that they belong to this priestly caste of Zoroastrianism, which paid real attention to the stars. They had this astrological understanding of nature. They spent their time and gained international reputation 
for their understanding of astrology. They had a high regard for science. I think that as we look at this and we think of science and theology, and oftentimes we think that science cancels out theology, what we discover is God teaches us a lesson in the text that he is in control of all of nature. God controls what happens in science. God controls what happens in theology. God is a sovereign God. So what we discover that these wise men, as some have suggested that it was three wise men, but the text simply lets us know that it was the Magi. And as we study it historically, it would have been a group that we have no particular number for, but we know that it was a group who had spent their time studying astrology, studying the stars, and it was this group that had another practice of religion. They were individuals that spent their time studying science, yet God used faith and knowledge to bring them to Christ. Beloved, that says so much to us as relates to us worshiping God. We, we see in this text that God shows us that if there is faith, if there is a knowledge of God, God can cause us to have an understanding that perhaps will supersede our academic perspective and give us an anointed understanding of who God is. God used this these scientists and those who practiced other religions and he let them be the ones to tell Herod and the chief priests and the scribes the news concerning the Messiah. So what we see in the text, first of all, in verse 2, I want to focus on the fact that worship as a response to the person of Jesus. Verse number 2 of the text says, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Jesus is the Messiah. He is the king of the Jews and should be honored for being the Messiah and the king of the Jews. Verse 2 announces this unapologetically and clearly that this story is really about where is he who was born king of the Jews? It's about a newborn child destined to be the king of the Jews. This would remind us of someone who some child somewhere now birthed into this world who will ultimately be the president of these United States of America. May not seem to be much, but that person is already set by God's design. So there is this worship as a response to the person of Jesus. That is what we see in the text. These magi, these wise men, they make this journey because they have somehow God has divinely moved in a way that they are looking for this one who will be born king of the Jews and they want to worship him because of his person. Beloved, when we know who Jesus is, when we know his person, it ought to prompt a response of worship. I, I raised the question to us this morning, do you know who Jesus is? Do you know the one that you worship? If you understand and know the one that you worship, this Advent season being a time of worship, it will prompt a response to the person of Jesus, a worship response to the person of Jesus, but also it's a worship response to the protesters of Jesus. It's this time of worship. It's a response of worship to the person, but also worship is a response to the protesters of Jesus. Look at verse 3 of the text and verse 4 of the text. Watch what the scripture says. When Herod the king heard this, 
he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him, gathering together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. Drop down to verse 7 and verse 8. And it says, then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time and that the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I may come to worship him or come and worship him. Matthew tells us in these verses that Jesus was born during the time of King Herod. Then in verse 3, he tells us that Herod was, had heard about the Magi who had traveled to worship. Listen, the king of the Jews, and this disturbed him because Herod was on paper and in position the king of the Jews. So he was disturbed because he knew that he was not the rightful heir to the Davidic throne. So when he heard of the Magi's announcement of the Magi's presence of coming to worship the one who is the king of the Jews, he probably saw this as a threat and felt that he was being invaded, perhaps by forces that would join with Israel, forces from the east that would join with Israel to perhaps to try to oust him and place on the throne, the king that was in the Davidic lineage. So for a man like Herod, he was paranoid yet ruthless at the same time. He was protective of his position. So finding out from the Magi that this one who was born was of this Davidic lineage and had this information in his possession, he sought that he would do everything that he could to keep this child from ascending to the throne but what Herod did not know is that this was above him this was greater than him so when he found out he discovered this was a prophetic thing that was happening so he wanted to figure out how can I wipe out this person so that this person does not become a threat to my throne beloved when we worship God when we worship Jesus, it is also a response to those who are protesters of Jesus because there are those in our culture today who would argue that he is not the king of kings, that he is not the Lord of lords. Thus, they want to do everything they can to wipe Jesus out. But every time we worship him, every time we lift his name up, every time we we give adoration to his name. That which they try to wipe out becomes greater every time we worship. Therefore, beloved, we ought to worship God because it's a response to those who are protesting who Jesus is, protesting what Jesus stands for, protesting what he means. Therefore, our worship ought to be a response to those who say he is not the son of God, yet we worship him because he is the son of God. God, those who worship him and say, who suggest and protest against him being the king, when we worship him, we are saying that he is the king. When they say he's not the Lord of Lords, we, we worship him. It's a response to those who are protesting who Jesus is, that we are worshiping to say he is Lord of Lords. He is a way out of no way. He is the God of all. He is the savior of the world. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So when we worship, it's a response to those who protest Jesus, but also worship. It's a response to the prophecy of Jesus. Verse 5 and verse 6 says, They said to him in Bethlehem, Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. What we discover is the chief priest and the scribes. We introduce them in verse number four. 
And Herod was the king of the Jewish people. But he didn't know the scriptures about the Messiah who had been promised. So he calls to himself these religious scholars of the land. And with ease, they were able to easily answer the questions and the queries that Herod was raising. Most of the Jews perhaps were probably eagerly waiting and anticipating being set free from Roman rule by this prophesied king. The priests and the teachers of the law, they quoted Micah chapter 5, verse number 2, to King Herod informing him that prophet Micah had said, but you, Bethlehem in the land of Judea, by no means least among the rulers of Judah, but out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. It's interesting that these chief priests, scribes, knew the prophecies about the Messiah. Yet, the text does not even suggest that they made efforts to go worship. It is strange how God shows us in the text that it is the Magi who travels 900 plus miles away to come to Jerusalem to worship Jesus, one that was not a part of their religious group, yet something happened between them hearing about this one who would be born king of the Jews that prompted them to make this extensive journey from the east traveling to Jerusalem so that they could worship the king of the Jews, the Messiah. Yet the religious scholars of the day had knowledge of the prophecy understood what was supposed to come to pass, yet they did not make the effort to worship. There is a lesson that we can learn here in these verses. It teaches us that from the very beginning of Jesus wrapping himself, God wrapping himself in flesh to live among us, that he would be a God to all people. It also suggests that the Magi, not being of a Jewish ethnicity, they would have been considered Gentiles, suggesting that God opens a way to even foreigners to be able to worship him. Beloved, come here closer to me. That says that God shows us that when our Savior was born, nobody was off limits of being able to worship him. That's why you cannot allow anybody make you feel that you are not worthy to be able to worship our God. He opened the door from the very beginning, giving others the opportunity to worship him and what he shows us by allowing the Magi to come from the east and come to Jerusalem, not being of a Jewish ethnic descent. He allows them to know something about Jesus so much so that they heard and by faith and knowledge that they wanted to find this Savior. Thus they followed the star and they wanted to worship him because there was something about what they had, what had happened to them in the east that drove them to have a determined desire to get to this place even though it meant traveling over much terrain just to get to Jesus. Beloved, it says that when we know who Jesus is, we must not let anything distract us or detour us from getting to Jesus, but we must have an intentional desire to worship him they wanted to worship when we study the word of God and understand the prophetic utterances in the scriptures it ought to prompt us to have a desire to worship but then watch this we see worship as a response to the presence of Jesus worship as a response to the person of Jesus 
Worship as a response to the protesters of Jesus. Worship as a response to the prophecy of Jesus. And the verses 9 through 12 says worship is a response to the presence of Jesus. Verse 9 of the scripture says, after hearing the king, they went their way and the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them. Watch the scriptures. Verse 10 says, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Verse 11, after coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell to the ground and worshiped him. The, then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. The Magi although in the text, shows us that they were Gentiles, non-Jews. They were aware of what the Old Testament prophecies taught about Jesus. And when they saw this star, it prompted them to follow this star. They also knew other prophecies, perhaps Numbers 24, 17, which says, A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. So when God sent the star that pointed the way to Jesus, they were watching and they were waiting. They responded to God. Beloved, we ought to respond to the power of God because when we respond to the power of God, it can get us to the presence of God. When we get into the presence of God, notice, and I said this in Bible study on Wednesday, it changes how we perceive things. It changes our perception. The power of God was at work in the sense that God was working through the cosmos. He was at work in the midst of having the star, how the star got to the east and how the star guided them all the way to Jerusalem and then how the star stopped and then how the star took them to where Jesus was with his mother Mary. I do not know, but what I do know is God's hand was at work and that shows us the power of God. Beloved, if nothing else will cause you to worship, you ought to worship because we see in the text the power power of God. The power of God touched people who were not even necessarily connected to God by any ethnic descent, but God was at work. His power prompted them, and as his power prompted them by way of the star, it pushed them to the place where Jesus was. When they got to the place where Jesus was, they then moved into the presence of Jesus. Beloved, let me tell you, there's something about the power of God when it's at work in people, it gets people to the right place. And when people get to the right place, it gets them in the right presence. These magi now found themselves in the right presence. And now as they are in the presence, they now have different perception. They see the mother of Jesus, but they see the Jesus, this child, they see this Savior. And what it does then, it moves them from place to presence. And from presence, it moves them to change their posture. The Bible says that they bowed and worshiped him. Beloved, when you get in the presence of God, it ought to shift your perceptions that you start seeing different. And when you start seeing different, you surrender different. And as they were seeing different, they surrendered before the Lord. And in their surrender, it shifted their posture. They became submissive to the Savior that they bowed 
there before him. And watch this. Once their posture changed, it affected their presentation. They went into their treasures and they gave him gifts. Beloved, let me tell you, when there you start seeing different, it shifts you in a way that then you share differently. Some of us, we've not made presentations to the Savior because we can't see right. But when you see right, it shifts you to then you surrender right. And when you surrender right, you submit the right way. And when you submit, you can't help but share. The Magi teach us a lesson. They are sharing because once they got into this place where they were now into the presence of God, their posture changed. Worship will change your posture. I don't care how big and bad and bold you think you are, but when you get into the presence of God there is something about being in his presence that gives you a perception about your person you start seeing you you remember it was Isaiah who said in the year that King Isaiah died I saw the Lord high and lifted up his train filled the temple Isaiah said I saw seraphims I saw them they had wings to veil their face wings to veil their feet then wings to fly and they said he said but woe is me for I am a man of unclean lips when he got into God's presence his perception changed he saw his person his person prompted him to say Lord here am I send me I will go beloved there's something about being in the presence of God that changes our perception let me tell you I don't know what you're going through but I dare you to get into the presence of God. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I dare you to get into the presence of God. That which has you down, if you get into the presence of God, uh, his presence will give you hope in the midst of uh, despair. I, I, I dare you to get into the presence of God. Whatever you're dealing with, you will discover God will lift you up in the presence of Jesus, the Magi. They couldn't help but worship God. Beloved, I don't know how we come to worship and we sit with our arms folded and we sit there like nothing has happened but when you are in the presence of the Lord and let me tell you you don't have to wait until Sunday morning in a sanctuary I dare you to get in his presence in your own house I dare you to get in his presence wherever you are you'll discover that what you thought you could do you will start start feeling the power of God and can, can you see the magi the, these astrologers these these scientists these men who had come from the east and this baby that they see prompted them can you imagine how powerful how strong they were but let, let me tell you the strongest of the strong when you get into the presence of God it will shift your perspective it'll change your attitude it'll change your mindset it'll change the way you think it'll change the way you see it will change the way you view things and when they got into the presence of Jesus they saw his mother but his mother wasn't what shifted their posture. They saw all of the surroundings, but that was not what shifted their posture. They saw all of the happenings in the room, but that was not what shifted their posture. It was when they saw that baby Jesus. It was when they saw that toddler boy Jesus, even though he was still a small child even though he was still a small boy it was something about his presence and I stopped to tell somebody it's something about the presence of Jesus when you get in his presence it will change change your mindset when you get in his presence it will change your attitude when you get in his presence it will change how you see yourself is there anybody listening is there anybody watching can testify with me that when you got in his presence 
the thing that was holding you down God lifted the pressure is there anybody here can testify to the fact that when you got in his presence you came in and you didn't feel well but you got in his presence and everything started to turn around and I stopped by to tell somebody in this Advent season it's a time of worship and worship is a time when God can turn things around is there anybody here need a turn around situation I dare I dare you to get in his presence and watch God change your attitude watch God change your mindset watch God change your perspective yes he will I'm a living testimony I've seen him work I've seen his power is there anybody here is there anybody can testify with me and you can see when you got in his presence you had to come away and say can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody lift me like Jesus can't nobody hold me like Jesus can't nobody lift me like Jesus is there anybody here can testify to the fact that when you got in his presence it changed your life I'm a living testimony he can fix you where you're broken I'm a living testimony he can mend you where you're broken he can lift you where you're down he can turn you around he can pick you up when you've fallen is there anybody here can and testify to the fact um, shucks fire can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus uh, can't nobody uh, love me like Jesus uh, can't nobody uh, lift me like Jesus uh, can't nobody uh, lead me like Jesus uh, he'll lead you all the way uh, from earth to glory you just have to trust him um, and never doubt him uh, either that anybody here can testify Jesus is uh, the Savior of the world um, when we get to Advent season uh, I've been waiting uh, and I've been watching uh, and I've been witnessing uh, and I've got to tell somebody my waiting led to worship uh, my witnessing led to worship uh, my watching led to worship uh, my one the layer to worship him every time I think about Jesus think about where I could have been think about where I should have been think about what ought to be but I think about what God has done he saved my soul he's made me hold can God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us a Savior that's worthy of worship. Lord, let us not be distracted by all of the commercialized accoutrements of Christmas. But God, let us be reminded that this is a time that we have the privilege and the opportunity to worship our Savior Jesus. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch the life, the heart of the person 
does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. In this season, God, let them not be distracted by all of these other things. But God, the same way you directed the Magi to the Savior, God, direct the minds of those who are without a Savior to Jesus. Lord, I pray for the person of the persons who because of life's tragedies and troubles, they journeyed away from Jesus. But God, I pray even after today, hearing the word that they would be moved by your spirit to recommit, to reconnect, to restore their relationship. God, I pray for the person or persons, perhaps who do not have a church, a place to worship, a place to be developed, a place to be discipled. They would be inclined to connect with us here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church so that we can teach them the truth of Scripture. But God, how to apply that truth to their life each and every day. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We bless your name. It is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. And every child of God said, amen. Beloved, if you've not connected, we want you to know that on the screen there are multiple ways that you can connect. We would love you to be a part of what God is doing here at the New Mount Island Baptist Church. If the Lord is prompting you to contribute and share on the screen, there are multiple ways that you can be a part. We thank you for being a part of what God is doing here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. We love you. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you would, go with me as we go to God in prayer and our benediction. Gracious God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for the bounty of blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you, God, for the precious privilege to worship. We do not take lightly you allow us to come into your presence and to worship you. Now may the grace of God rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again. And every child of God said, Amen. Let us now share together in our declaration. We, the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, are called by God to exemplify the servant leadership of Christ for the spiritual transformation of the world. Again, I love you, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is my prayer. God bless.